All right, guys, so in this example here, we have a simple constant diameter pipe. We have air flowing in through the left side and exiting at the right side. We're given the temperature on both sides of it. We're also told that the diameter of this pipe is equivalent on both the left and right side. And we have the pressure and velocity on the left side, and we're looking for the pressure and the velocity on the right side. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm looking for the velocity in this instance, the exit velocity, which would be V2. So we'll say V2 equals some number in meters per second, meters per second. So in order to get the velocity, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the energy balance equation over this pipe. And the reason is that because we're using air here and we have the temperature on both sides, we have the enthalpies of both sides. And then we have the velocity on one side and we don't have the velocity on the other side. It's what we're looking for. And then it's a horizontal pipe. So therefore Z1 equals Z2. So therefore the potential energy is going to be equal to zero or the change in potential energy is going to be equal to zero so we're going to have that zero equals q minus w which is just the heat transfer minus the power plus the mass flow rate times h1 minus h2 plus v1 squared minus v2 squared of course, the velocity divided by 2, this is your kinetic energy. And then you're going to add to that times G, which is multiplied by Z1 minus Z2. And that would be your potential energy. So in this instance here, we were told that we can neglect stray heat transfer. And so as a result, we have no heat transfer. And then also, this is a pipe. There's no shaft that's turning. This, there's no power that's being produced, nor power being generated by this pipe so therefore we can neglect power as well and then we can also neglect potential energy as it's a horizontal pipe so therefore you don't have the vertical factor no change in elevation and also while we're at it we can also eliminate the mass flow rate just for simplicity because it wasn't given to us so if you divide both sides by the mass flow rate you're dividing zero by the mass flow rate we can eliminate the mass flow rate from this equation and so if we simplify our equation we'll have that zero equals the incoming specific enthalpy minus the exiting specific enthalpy plus the difference of velocity squared divided by two, which is of course your kinetic energy. So we can find H1 and H2. So let's start filling what we have here. So we have zero equals, open up a bracket. And so for H1, so at H1 or to find H1 is going to be equal to whatever the enthalpy is for air at 320 Kelvin. So if you go to table A22 and we go to 320 Kelvin, we have 320.29 kilojoules per kilogram, so 320. So we have 320.29 kilojoules per kilogram. And then conversely, on the other side, we have 305. So we'll have H2 is equal to whatever the enthalpy is at 305. So we'll go to 305 right here. And we have 305.22 kilojoules per kilogram. So we'll have 305.22 kilojoules per kilogram. And now we can just fill that in. So we'll have 320.29 minus 305.22. And we're going to add our velocities now. So V1, we were given 30 meters per second, so we can square that. So we have 30 squared minus V2. So V2 is actually what we're looking for here. So we have V2 squared. And by the way, I actually like to add um, arrows on top just to indicate that it's velocity as a vector instead of um, volumetric flow rate. So I'm just going to do that. And now we're going to divide by two. And now before I close my square bracket, I just want to add a conversion factor here because if you notice on the left here, the enthalpy was given in kilojoules per kilogram. And you're trying to add this unit here on the right, which would just be the square of velocity, which would be meters per second, but we're going to square that, so you'll have meters squared per second squared. So you need to figure out what does this unit here on the left really equal. So if we just look at the top unit of a kilojoule, and we were to break that down, so you just break that down into a kilonewton meter, which then you can break down, so if you have the kilo unit, but if we break down the newton, we're going to have, remember from Newton's second law, force, uh, yeah, force equals mass times acceleration, we'll have a kilogram meter per second squared, that's the newton, and then we have to multiply it by the newton, uh, or sorry, by the meter, this meter right here, 
and we'll therefore have a meter squared. And now if we carry over this kilogram over here, so we divide by a kilogram, you can cancel out the kilograms and you're going to be left with a kilo meter squared per second squared. So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to add kilo meter squared per second squared to meter squared per second squared. And so in order to do that, you're going to have to add a conversion factor by either dividing one side by 1,000 or multiplying another side by 1,000. So in other words, both have to be kilos or both have to have no prefix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the kilo to both. And remember, to get to kilograms or to get to kilo anything, you just divide by 1,000. So I'm going to add a conversion factor here of 1 divided by 1,000. And that should give us a kilo prefix now. So now if you rearrange and solve for the velocity, you'll have that V2 equals 176.18 meters per second. And now for part two, I'm going to use the ideal gas law. So we're looking for the pressure, and we're told that this air can be modeled as an ideal gas. So therefore, we know that the expression of PV equals MRT. I'm going to add this little slash into the V to show that it's a volume. And in fact, it's going to be a volumetric flow rate for both the mass and the, velocity, and the uh, volumetric flow rate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange for the pressure, volume, and temperature on one side. So we'll have PV divided by T equals M dot R. And notice on the right side, the mass flow rate is going to be a constant because it's a single exit, sing, well, single inlet, single exit control volume. And then the gas constant also is, well, it's a constant, right? So therefore... At both inlet 1 and exit 2, M1 and R1 are equal to M2 and R2. And that's important because that means that P1, V1, which are not constant, and T1, again, not constant, should be equal to P2, V2, over T2. And this is a valid expression for a single inlet, single exit control volume using the ideal gas model. So we're going to use this expression here, this equivalent expression, to find the, the uh, pressure. Um, before I do so, just remember that the volumetric flow rate, keep in mind volumetric flow rate is equal to velocity times area. Just keep that in mind. And so I'm going to therefore make that substitution into here. So we're going to have that P1, P1 times V1, velocity 1, area 1, divided by... T1 equals P2 times velocity 2, area 2. Again, that would just be your uh, volumetric flow rate, divided by T2. And then remember that the area here is just a function of the diameter. That's how you find the... It'd be area equals pi d squared over 4, right? So if D1 equals D2, then A1 also equals D2. So therefore, we could divide both sides by A A1 or A2, and they're going to cancel out. So we can cancel that unit out. And we're going to have that pressure times velocity divided by temperature is equal on both sides. So I just rewrote it over here on the left side. And now we can just plug in what we have. So we have 900 kilopascals times our volume, or our velocity, sorry. So our velocity was... 30 meters per second times 30 meters per second divided by our temperature, which was also given as 320 Kelvin. And we can set that equal to our P2, which we're looking for, P2 times V2, which we already solved from part one, is 176.18. And we're going to divide that by T2, which is given to us as 305 Kelvin. And if you solve for P2 and plug this into your calculator, you'll have that P2 equals, I have 146.07 kilopascals.